of where their thinking comes from, just using their thinking, like children with M16s and knives, okay? So it's just the awareness of one's nature and then functioning from that nature moment to moment to help all beings. That's all, okay? So any more questions? Any more questions? Mr. Ho said we can go a little late today. Yeah. Sure. Hmm? Hold it, wait for the... Well, maybe so they can hear it. So my question is, where does the thinking come from? Where does thinking come from? From your open mouth. Any other questions? <laughs> it's very clear. It's very clear. Yeah. Um, just, uh, I wondered if, A, you could elaborate a little bit more on your trip to Tibet, and then also, um, given that, what's, what do you think is the proper context, or what do you think is the proper role for Buddhism in politics, you know, given the monks in Burma recently and that kind of thing? The, tr the trip to Tibet was a pilgrimage um, sponsored by this, um, this organization to just to bring 50 or 60 people to go and do pilgrimage to the holy sites in Tibet. It wasn't tourism. It was to go and do pilgrimage. And, uh, you know, it's hard not to be touched by the existence of a very extraordinarily spiritual. Now, you have to remember this was a militaristic society, the Tibetans. They had conquered as far as Mongolia. They'd conquered as far as Mongolia and into parts of what's now Afghanistan. And then one day they received these teachings over the Himalayas and their king decided militarism doesn't work. Let's apply ourselves to what is this mind. So he turned all of the national resources. I think you'd do better to ask actually a professor at your own university, Columbia, very popular. Robert Thurman. Does anyone know who Robert Thurman is? Oh, we have one in the back. All right, I'll, I'll help you guys connect to who he is. Uma Thurman's father. <laughs> Professor of Indo-Tibetan Buddhism at Columbia University. New York, Upper West Side. Maybe I'll clue you into a little bit. He's a great professor. He's rated you know, by Time Magazine, one of the 100 most influential people in America a couple years ago. Extraordinary mind. An extraordinary public intellectual in the, a kind of a Buddhist form of what you, something of, of Cornell West. Professor Cornell West, someone who can take any kind of, someone who has just a shockingly penetrating view, not only of his own discipline, but of anything he applies his mind to and applies it to the public interest. So um, here's a, a tradition which took all of its resources and its whole impulse towards conquering and militarism and poured it into investigation of mind. It's the world's, as Professor Thurman calls, the world's largest monastery, which had a president who was a monk, an unmarried monk, and whose ministers, whose, we would say, secretary of whatever, were monks. So it's a very fascinating society to encounter because you encounter a society which has turned from militarism to interior investigation and therefore compassion for this world. So it's a very, you can't describe it. It's an extraordinary thing to experience what kind of society that might be, what that might be. Actually something the West experienced for a few years before uh, the Dark Ages set in in the West. Anyway, to experience that is very extraordinary based on introspection and service, out of compassion. So we saw that, but at the same time you see that that is now being stripped away and now being commercialized and, and, and raped and pillaged and, and dominated and erased actually from humanity's treasure house by a, a country that uh, wishes to just get what's inside the land. So it's a very sad situation. In fact, I found myself coming back to Seoul yesterday at very, very sad in that way. Very sad. So it's an extraordinary experience, one you couldn't put into words very easily. Also, while we were there, there's this uprising now happening in, among Tibetan peoples in India, in Nepal, and in Tibet, the monks. 
So um, to answer your question, it was an extraordinary experience uh, to see that. And now we see how is it connected to, well, the politics right now is that the, the Tibetan people want their own homeland back. They want to run the things their way, the way their people knows. But they're being repopulated by a national policy which is trying to overpopulate them uh, by other ethnic group, which will then own their country, which owns their country now. Okay, that's all. Second part of your question? Was just, you know, given the, given the political activities of monks in Burma as well as many other countries, what do you, what do you view as the proper role of, of the, you know, Buddhist religion in, with respect to kind of mundane Well, if you politics? look at Buddhist politics, it's usually constructive. It doesn't depend on killing someone else to get your point across. It never has. It has never been engaged in political violence. Has never been engaged in political violence. So Buddhism functions by uh, meeting the nature in the other that is the same as my nature, that's not other. The only real case of violence in Buddhist politics was in 1963 when the great monk in Vietnam immolated himself in the square in uh, Hanoi to bring to the world's attention the oppression of Buddhism by the Catholic, majority, the Catholic minority in Vietnam, supported by our government. And the suppression, the, 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 the discrimination against Buddhists in Vietnam was not being looked at and was being supported by many powers, so he immolated himself, killed, but he killed himself, killed his own body. And as you know from study of history, that's where public opinion in America started to turn when they saw that image on their newspapers, a peaceful person doing that. So Buddhist politics is not about violence, certainly violence against a perceived other. Buddhist politics means wake up, wake up. So it's the Dalai Lama. Dalai Lama is a perfect example of Buddhist politics. It's not attacking. He has people he could just go like this. And hundreds of thousands of Tibetan youth would run into the Chinese troops' faces, throwing st sticks or rocks or bottles, Molotov cocktails. Buddhist politics is about affirmation, not negation. And you don't have to believe me. You can Google it. He actually recommended it. This is very interesting from someone whose country has been utterly 6,000 monasteries destroyed and erased. 6,000 monasteries erased. And the Dalai Lama said when the Olympic proposal came up 12 years ago, he recommended to the IOCC. The IOCC said, well, you Tibetans, you might have something. They said, no, give the Olympics to China. And the Dalai Lama reminded people, he said, we never opposed the Olympics for China. We thought, whatever helps the Chinese people, we want to help them. It's very interesting. You've never seen that gesture before. But he said, but now we ask the Chinese to keep up their end of the bargain, which is to live up to their constitution, which supposedly guarantees freedom of religion. We're an affirmative people. We have an affirmative view. We believe in the best of the Chinese people. Okay. So that's Buddhist politics. And history bears out that, actually, that it's not just him, that it's always been that way for 2,500 years. It's not a damaging, inflicting, attacking, vengeful, retaliatory view. Because the nature of the other and the self are the same nature. There is no other. There is no self. It really operates from that view. It really operates from that view. It's about serving true nature, really. And it's not a policy. It's actually an insight. So Buddhist teaching operates not from a teaching or a dogma. It actually operates. That's why if you look in Buddhist meditation, the posture that you see in Buddhist forms is interesting. It's based on insight. Fundamental insight, 
from that insight comes true wisdom. True wisdom means self and other are not two things. And Buddhist history bears that out. There's never been an example. Never. That should be page one. That should even be higher than the Elliot Spitzer story, I think. Maybe. Yeah, definitely. In the New York Times. Okay? So Buddhist politics operates from that point of view. It operates from fundamental awareness. Actually, Plato proposed the same thing. Plato's, although I'm not going to get into the conservative aspects of it, but it's based on self-knowledge. Okay? Yeah, okay, so we have to go. Uh, before you all go, I wanted to give you as a gift a mistake. <laughs> this is uh, something that a collection of my teacher's teachings that I did that was published in the United States a couple years ago, two years ago, by Shambhala Publications in New York City, in uh, Boston and London. So as you're leaving, you can pick up a copy on your way out. Uh, you uh, oh, yes, where's the professor? Oh, professor can call. <laughs> professor. Oh, Her Professor Harrigan. Nice to meet you. <laughs> okay, so I want to thank everyone for uh, coming today to uh, Buddhist television. Uh, most important, you are all going to go out, you're studying. Studying business, studying science, studying anything is not good, not bad. Like I said, how you use it, how you use it, the thing itself is not good, not bad. Capitalism, communism, Christianity, Buddhism, itself is not good or bad. How you use it, only for me? or for truly for all beings. That makes this either correct study or incorrect study. Religion is the same. Studying religion, only my religion is correct. Then even this religion can harm more people than it helps. So as you study, just keep your direction clear. For all beings, for this suffering world, there's great profit in that view. Then any kind of business is good business because it helps myself by helping this world. So I want to encourage you all um, in your study to always keep that view. It's not a Buddhist view. It's not a Christian view. It's the way the world is. So thank you everyone for coming to this talk today and uh, I hope to maybe bump into you sometime at uh, corner 116th Street and uh, Broadway. Maybe the West End or something like that. <laughs> See you around.